you can actually block ads from appearing in almost any mobile game by downloading just one app. It's called AdGuard and all you have to do to get it up and running is to go to the official AdGuard website and download the app, open it and turn this slider on. If you don't want to download the app though, you can instead just input an AdGuard DNS address manually in your phone's internet settings. You can find these addresses on the official website as well. If you've ever had a game that you wanted to play in an unintended screen orientation, like let's say Monument Valley Free and Landscape instead of Portrait, then all you have to do is install this app called Force Orientation. Add your game to this list and choose what orientation you want. Just note that this doesn't really work for every game. Those were just two of the 30 different tips I'll be talking about in this video. From unlocking hidden performance boost to reviving old games that shouldn't work anymore, these tips will change how you game on mobile. This is a pretty Android-centered video, sorry to the 5 Apple fans in the audience, but you'll still find some of the tips useful, so keep watching. Please. If you want to download a game that's no longer available on the Play Store, there's still a very easy way to install it, and that's by simply searching for the game name and adding APK at the end. My go-to website for APKs is APK Pure, I used it a ton and never had any issues with it, and it allows you to download basically any delisted app you'd ever want. When you're on the APK Pure website for a game you're interested in, just tap on the download for the version you want, then scroll down and tap download again. The app will start downloading, and once that's done, all you have to do is install Install it. Also for APK Pure alternatives, I'd recommend up to down and APK combo, they're also solid options. Things get a bit more complicated though if a game needs to download additional data after installation, but the game's servers have been shut down, which makes it impossible to download that extra data, and therefore the game won't run. In this case, you'll also need to download the game's OBB file and put it in the proper place. You should be able to find it by searching for game name and version and adding OBB. So once you find the right OBB file, you first have to install the APK of the game, and once that's done, go to the file manager called ZArchiver, available for free on the Play Store. Next navigate to the folder called Android, then OBB, and here you have to create a new folder with the game's package name and paste the OBB file inside of that folder. If you don't know what the game's package name is, you can probably find it online. Now copy the OBB file, press the two dots at the top, and again go to Android, then OBB, the folder you made previously, and paste the file. If instead of just the raw OBB file, you got a folder that already has the right name and the OBB file inside of it, then just copy the folder, back out with the two dots, go to Android, then OBB, and paste the folder there. The two previous tips are very useful for downloading not just modern games, but also old ones, and many of those old games were made with 32-bit systems in mind. But ever since Android 14 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor, support for 32-bit apps was completely removed. And so, on these modern phones, the only way to get these old games to run is to set up a virtual machine, which essentially allows you to have a different phone in your current phone. For example, you could have a virtual phone running Android 7, which will allow you to still run those old games. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you. So to do this, you can download the VPhone OS app on your phone and create a 64-bit Android 7 virtual machine. Then use the tips provided earlier to download the games you want and you're pretty much good to go. The previous tips were pretty long and complex, so here's a few that you may already know but are important to remember nonetheless. Remember to enable Do Not Disturb or a Focus mode if you're playing games where one perfectly timed phone call can make everything go to sh**. If your phone has one, then enable a game performance boosting mode, and if it doesn't, then there's plenty of game booster apps you could download. Turn off all of the apps that are running in the background. Obvious, I know, but even though modern phones are made for multitasking, having 20 games open at once is still not the greatest idea. Speaking from experience here, just please use headphones for multiplayer games like Call of Duty Mobile so that I don't have to spectate you getting shot in the back of your skull. Disable battery optimization for your game to make sure your phone isn't restricting its performance. If you have the option, enable dual channel network optimization. This can significantly reduce lag and get rid of any random network fluctuations. And remember to set your display refresh rate to the highest possible because you don't want to be that guy that had no idea this is even a thing after owning a phone for a few years and now you suddenly have a phone that feels 10 times smoother. Alright then, now let's go back to some longer tips. Say you want to play a game that's currently soft launch in a country different from yours. To do that, all you have to do is simply look up an APK of that game similar to how you download delisted games, but if for whatever reason that doesn't work, or a game literally just soft launch and no one uploaded the APK yet, you're gonna have to do this via a VPN. The easiest way to do this that I found is to download the free Tunnel Bear VPN, connect to whatever country the game has released in, and while you're connected, create a new email account, then just use that 
email in the Play Store and the game should be available to download. If you need to have multiple accounts in one game that doesn't natively support them, or you want to have multiple different saves in an offline game, then many modern phones actually have a built-in app cloner feature, so that you can have two separate instances of basically any app. To enable this on my Realme GT6, I have to go to settings, then apps, then app cloner, and finally just choose the app that I want to clone. And it will appear as a new app on the home screen. Keep in mind that the performance of the cloned app may be worse than the original, but this method only allows you to create one clone, and if you need even more, the app that I've always used for this is called Parallel Space. And with it you can create as many clones as you want, to for example get a special reward for inviting 12 friends in Dragon Mania Legends, which also means I now have 12 accounts and 0 actual friends. Sometimes you'll stumble across a game that would greatly benefit from having controller support, but for some reason it doesn't. One example being Age of Zombies, which is literally perfect for twin stick gameplay, but there is still a way to give the game controller support, and that is with the app called Mantis Gamepad Pro. Well, kind of. See, out of all of the different key mapping apps that I've tried, Mantis Gamepad is easily the most configurable and it's got a good amount of features in the free version, and it would be an easy recommendation if not for the fact that whatever I tried, the right stick just doesn't want to work. I can't can't tell you why. I even tried older versions of the app to see if this is just a problem with the new version, but that did not fix it. And the right stick seems to work perfectly when testing, but it just doesn't want to work in game. I don't know what the issue is here, but if they fix it, the app will be, like I said, an easy recommendation. If you want to record your phone's screen, then the easiest way to do that is with the built-in screen recorder, which pretty much every phone has. It should be available from the notification panel thing, and it's basically a tap and record situation, so there's not much to explain here. But if the built-in recorder ain't cutting it, then I believe the best alternative is X Recorder. While some features require premium, pretty much everything that I ever wanted the app to do is completely free. And I'd say this is probably the best Android screen recorder out there. All you need to do to set it up is go to settings in the app. App, pick out the settings you want, and you're pretty much good to go. Only problem is, X Recorder can't record my new phone at its maximum resolution of 1440p as it caps at 1080p. And if you have the same problem, then you'll have to use a different method, which I'll go over later in the video. And speaking of screen recording, if you ever wanted to screen record your phone for YouTube, play a game that was made with older phones in mind, or display your phone screen on a TV, you may have realized that your phone's aspect ratio is incorrect, or in other words, the screen is too wide, and in this case you'll need to change its size. I won't explain how to do that here because I already made a tutorial on this, and it will be linked in the end card at the end. Important note though, on some modern phones this doesn't work properly, and instead of the aspect ratio changing with the screen resolution, only the resolution changes. I have no idea why this happens since this is genuinely not documented anywhere on the internet, so if anyone knows a solution please let me know in the comments. Interestingly enough, if you connect your phone to an external monitor, the phone screen will actually display without stretching, so it's just the phone that doesn't know what the hell to do when the resolution is changed. Anyway though, now it's time for some developer options tricks, but first let me tell you how to actually enable developer options. It's really simple, all you have to do is go to settings, then about device or about phone, and here you'll need to tap some Thing multiple times in a row. Build number, MIUI version, who really knows, on my phone it's version number. After tapping it a few times, developer options will be unlocked. If you don't know what to tap, you can search it up like this. And so here are some developer option settings that you could change. If you have a powerful phone, you can turn on Force 4X MSAA, which boosts graphics quality by enabling anti-aliasing, making games look smoother, and you can also turn on Disable HW Overlays, which forces your phone's GPU to handle all of the graphics rendering. These settings can have a big impact on battery drain though, and potentially cause lag if your phone isn't powerful enough, so make sure to do some testing before you fully commit to using them. If you're instead looking to squeeze out every last drop of performance out of a weaker phone, then you can limit background processes to let's say only two at a time, which saves on RAM, but switching between apps could cause reloads. Or you could set the animation scale to half or off. This only affects system UI animations, and half makes the animations faster, while off disables them entirely. The next two tips are all gonna involve screen copy, spelled SCRCPY, which is a tool for computers that allows you to do a ton of cool stuff with your phone. It does also require developer options, but this time you also need to enable USB debugging. Once that's done, you can connect your phone to your PC with the cable you use to charge your phone, download the latest version of screen copy from its official GitHub page, extract the downloaded zip, double click on ADB, type in CMD in the folder path, and you're ready to go. I know I've kind of speedrun this setup, but that's because I covered it 
it in more detail in this video, which will be linked at the end. So the primary function of screen copy is mirroring the phone screen, which can be done with this command for example, and it will mirror the phone with decent quality without lagging out the phone. And I mostly use this to talk on Discord voice chat through my laptop while also streaming the mobile game I'm playing. Sometimes I use the no window option in order to just hear the sound of the game from my laptop without mirroring the visuals, so that I can play a mobile game and use Discord voice chat through my laptop. And remember when I talked about recording your phone screen in the highest possible quality? Well, screen copy can do exactly that by simply adding the record option and specifying where you want the file to end up. From what I understand though, this doesn't really reduce the load on the phone so there shouldn't be any real performance benefits to this method. You can also add the no window option so that you're not additionally taxing the phone with the mirroring. Okay, so before we get into my top 3 best tips, here's 4 rapid fire battery life saving tips. If your phone has an OLED screen, just use dark mode. There is really no reason not to as it's better for your eyes. And it can significantly increase battery life by just turning off individual pixels when the screen needs to display the color black. Always use Wi-Fi instead of mobile data if possible. Lower your screen brightness assuming you'll still see the game well. Temporarily use a lower screen refresh rate if you're playing a slower game. And so with those out of the way, now it's time for my top 3 best mobile gaming tips, starting with the Metal Recorder app. Now what this app does is it allows you to save gameplay moments after they happen with the press of a button. Like let's say I got a nice pentakill in Honor of Kings. To capture it, all I have to do is tap the floating metal bubble and it's saved. By default, Metal records only internal audio, but supposedly it can capture both internal and microphone audio. It just so happens that this doesn't work on my phone right now. The people behind the app are working on fixing this. But either way, I still use the app when playing something like Delta Force Mobile to capture my best place. One of the biggest issues when playing heavy games is overheating, and unless you've got like a gaming phone with built-in coolers, the best option is to get an external phone cooler. And let me tell you, this thing is maybe one of the best things I've ever bought. So the cooler you're seeing is called the K4. It attaches to the back of the phone like this, and once I plug it in via USB-C, I basically don't have to worry about my phone's temperature ever again, under normal conditions. Because of course, if I play outside during summer while charging and using mobile data at the same time, it's not really gonna be able to do anything. But when I'm at home and playing let's say Honor of Kings at max graphics while charging, I can do so for hours on end with no problems. And I really do mean for hours on end, because recently I played the game for 13 hours straight, please help me. And finally, here's the coolest tip that's more so a collection of different tips, and that is you can actually turn your phone into a hybrid gaming console of sorts, and what you need to achieve that is the launcher called Console Launcher, which gives your phone a console-like interface and even displays what game you're playing on Discord. Next, you need a way to connect your phone to your TV, like via an HDMI adapter if your phone's USB port is version 3 and above, or a display link adapter if it's not version 3, or just use screen copy to mirror the phone screen to a laptop and then connect your laptop to a TV, and finally a controller to actually play the games on a TV. This topic is way outside the scope of this video, so if you want more details then I have an entire video about this topic which will be linked at the end. Actually, I have one more secret tip that will not only take your mobile gaming to the next level, but will also completely change your life. And it's actually surprisingly simple. So much so, in fact, that I have no idea why more people don't do this. What I'm talking about is, of course, subscribing to the channel, following us on X or Blue Sky, and joining our Discord server. Because you know what they say, the real mobile gaming is the friends we made along the way in the Mobile Games Network Discord, am I right? If you did everything from the previous tip, you can now check out this video if you want to turn your phone into a gaming console console, or this one if you want to change your phone's screen size. Also shout out to the channel members for giving me free money, and have a wonderful day.